are coffee grounds good for the garden? I hope so, because I have just had 13 bins full of used coffee grounds delivered to my house. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I thought I was getting one bin delivered. Thankfully, however, coffee grounds are amazing for the garden. In this video, I'm gonna take you through how to use coffee grounds in your garden to get the absolute best results. So tell me again, Darren, how many bins have you got for me today? Uh, 13, 1320 litre bins, not all full, but certainly plenty of coffee grounds to improve your soil and your veggie patches. A, a full bin like that, close to 100 kilos, your driveway is gonna be full. Straight out of a coffee shop. When it's fresh like that, it's lovely. And then you have some that's been sitting around for a month or so before we pick it up and it's just crusted orange on top from all the, the microbes and the, the rotting down process. Now I have to add before we go on that it is actually pretty clear on the website that when you're ordering a delivery, you are indeed ordering a van full of coffee grounds. And it's pretty hilarious that I've somehow managed to miss that. So that's on me, not on reground. I'm recording this audio three weeks later and I'm pleased to say that I have found a use for every single bit of coffee that was delivered. I'm gonna talk you through how you can use it as a fertilizer, how it works as a weed suppressant and show you the results after three weeks time. And does it really work as a pest deterrent? I've put it to the test. And of course, what not to do. There are a few ways you can use coffee grounds in the garden that can be harmful. But first, let me introduce you to Reground, a fabulous social enterprise based right here in Melbourne that collects coffee grounds from cafes and coffee roasters and delivers them to gardeners. Thanks for all this coffee. That's fine, that's fine. That's what we do every day. Uh, we have three vans or four vans on the road every day and every day it's uh, they're, they're emptied at people's houses and community gardens and the zoo and all sorts of places. Are coffee grounds good for the garden? Of course they are, <laughs> they're very good for the garden. They're a wonderful soil conditioner, they add a lot of nitrogen to a garden when blended and composted, uh, composted and blended first. And, uh, it'll improve your soil and the, the worm count will skyrocket, I can tell you now. I've, I saw it myself firsthand yesterday at another fella's uh, garden in Cheltenham. He just lifted up and there was um, you know, 50 worms in, we put it there three months before. And they were very awake and alert. They were squir squirming, yes, yes. <laughs> so worms like coffee? Worms really love coffee. In fact, lots of things love coffee. A lot of people we deal with, you know, get a delivery every three months or six months, you know, a, a repeat customer, it's quite common. You want to compost it first for a while, three months or so, you know, before you throw it on. But it's wonderful for the garden. 12 months to two years, it's when it really, really, really picks up the garden after you put it on. So. I had a guy tell me yesterday, he said, oh, this is amazing. He said, it just took 12 months for it to really kick in. Coffee grounds are loaded full of nitrogen, an essential nutrient for healthy gardens. They also contain potassium, phosphorus, and other micronutrients. Coffee beans are acidic, but most of that acidity and caffeine is washed away when the coffee's been brewed. So let me stress here, we're talking about used coffee grounds, not fresh coffee grounds. A lot of people just take a big delivery, leave it in the back corner of the yard. They take a bunch of it, mix it in their latest mix and just work through it over 12 months. Some people want to use the coffee deliberately as a weed suppressant. They'll put it under their fruit trees just to stop all the weeds from competing with, uh, with their fruit trees. And they'll actually lay a layer, a thin layer of coffee on top to suppress weeds for the, for the first six months. And then it has the other effect, of course. This is what they call chaff and uh, this is the outside of the, of the coffee bean. When they roast it, it all falls off and it's like sawdust. And then they wet it down so that it uh, doesn't catch fire to the, fact, the roasting factory. So it, unfortunately, it's very heavy when they wet it. <laughs> that can go straight onto your garden as is, mix it in with your soil. It's actually a really good soil conditioner. Unlike the coffee, which you're gonna have to compost for a while. All right, here's some dry, dry chaff. It's like sawdust. Don't leave it out in the wind with the bag open because you won't have any left. It blows away very easily. Fantastic for soil conditioning. But you have to pretty much mix it into the garden when you open the bag. Those that love it absolutely are passionate about it. And, and, and some people tell me, I'd, I'd take all the chaff you can give me uh, over the coffee even.
given that I've got a bit to spare, I am putting chunks of coffee grounds in all the roots that I know are rat and possum roots in the hope that it might make it unpleasant enough that they leave us alone. Another thing to remember when you're composting coffee grounds in large quantities is that while they're brown in colour, in composting language they are a green, which means in order for them to break down in the most efficient way, you need to add a whole lot of browns to your garden. So they are your dried leaves, they are your sticks, they are your straw, also paper, whatever browns you usually put in your compost. You're going to need lots of browns to equal out the green of the coffee ground. Now that's the benefit of the chaff that gets delivered. The chaff is considered a brown composting material. So the two go very well together. One of the reasons people say not to put coffee grounds straight onto your garden is that it can actually get really hard and prevent water from getting into your soil. Coffee grounds were put around this tree three weeks ago as a bit of a test to see what would happen. The tree is still growing beautifully, looking healthy, no sign of any problems to the tree. The weeds slash plants that were nearby that haven't been smothered are fine. Those that were smothered don't seem to be poking through at all. But you can really see it does become quite compact and the water would have difficulty getting through there. I dumped a whole lot of coffee grounds up here to try to see if it worked as a weed suppressant. And it seems pretty clear that it doesn't kill weeds by touching them or burning them as I have read online, but it does seem to work by smothering them. So I guess it probably works just as well as that lid would by preventing sunlight or a bit of cardboard. So if you're wanting to get rid of excess coffee grounds, yes, you can use them to suppress your weeds. You just have to make sure that it's thick enough to cover the whole weed. So does it work to deter the pests? The biggest pests I've had around here are rats and possums. So I dumped a whole lot of coffee grounds in this corner over here in the hope that it would stop them using this as a thoroughfare. Has it worked? Well, let's take a look. You can see I've had to put a cage around my pumpkins in here. That's because something was eating them right next to the coffee grounds. However, I'm quite confident they're birds because it's been daytime that these leaves have been disappearing. So it's not gonna deter the birds, that's for sure. But I have to say I definitely haven't had as many possums and rats in my garden recently. I think it's too early to say whether or not that's to do with the coffee grounds. You can see down here I've put a big mound of coffee next to this compost pile. That is because I didn't have enough browns to mix with them all and I thought I'd save them for later. I have seen quite a few possums climbing around the trees up here since the coffee's been there. So the smell is not enough of a deterrent to stop the possums from being in the area. It may, however, deter them from eating very, very close to the coffee. I think the best analogy I can give you about how to use coffee grounds in the garden is a bit like how you should use banana peels. And no, I'm not talking about the water thing. I'm talking about actual whole banana peels in the garden. If you stuck a banana peel in the garden, that's not going to feed your plants immediately. First, it's going to rot and break down. But once it's been decomposed by the worms, it's fabulous for your soil. Coffee grounds, while well, they look like dirt, they're not dirt, they're a food product. So they too need to be broken down and decomposed before they're good for your soil in terms of a fertilizer. You can do that in a traditional composting method, but if you want to dump it in a pile and just leave it for 12 months, that will decompose too. So that's another easy option if you don't want to go through the whole official composting process. One of the things I've found really interesting in this whole process uh, and reading up everything I can about coffee grounds and used coffee grounds for the garden is the debate about acidity. You will read lots of different things about how acidic coffee grounds are. The general consensus seems to be the majority of that acidity is washed out. But what's really interesting is I can't see anyone's actually tested it out. So what I've done 
is a border kit where you can test acidity levels in soil. And I'm going to answer that question once and for all, but I'm actually gonna save that for another video. I will show you how acidic are coffee grounds that are straight out of the coffee machine? How acidic are they three weeks later? And how acidic are they once they've been mixed with your soil? I've got a crazy amount of veggies growing in my Melbourne backyard. I give full garden tours at least every month and I'm often out and about touring other gorgeous gardens too. If you like watching that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button too. It helps other people find this video.